so I got a 2012 International Workstar. And the problem we're having is these front front tires are getting some scalloped wear and stuff to it. Let's see if I can find you <clears throat> a good spot. There's one. A little bit right there. And some there and then here and then here. So um I guess it could be that it's out of balance, or you could have some type of worn suspension part. Um, an issue that I <coughs> am having is while I was kind of looking at it, so pulling on it, let me get some play in this front wheel. So, I don't know if you probably will see exactly how much. <coughs> But anyway, uh, I'm going to change out the bearings because I don't know how long they've been loose. I don't know if they're just wearing out and that's why they're loose. So uh, I'm going to pull these wheel off and I'm going to change the bearings. I'll probably do both sides, but I'll just film the one. So first thing we do is take the tire off and we'll take the drum off. And we'll take this hub off here, drain the oil out of it, undo the cotter pin and nut and slide the hub off. In this case you want on how tight to put them, it tells you right on them.
That's a big nut. Let me look, I don't have either one of those sizes. So So, this is actually loose. I wonder if I go to the next one. So I got one turn out of, or one notch out of it. I could probably get two. I guess you don't want it that tight. Yeah, so I could have hand tight put that one more, one more notch. So we definitely got a little bit of wear in there. Um, let's pull that off. I'll bring it in a little closer. Try to get this washer off. Stuck to the bearing. A big washer. Tuck that over, some dirt and crap don't land on it, and then uh, we'll pull these races and stuff out, and uh, we'll get some new bearings.
So I got a little one of those uh, containers right there. I got it cut in half and it's just sitting underneath to catch whatever comes out. So I'm going to knock that um, bearing seal and race into it. And I'm going to knock the front one out and then uh, like I said we'll get some new ones. Tell you the problem that I had when I had my tires done up at Tire Warehouse. What happened?
That was a blast. So clean these up and try to get some new ones. Hopefully they got them. So I got the race kind of lined up. I lubricated with some beer oil on the outside. Um, I cleaned out the inside and the parts washer. Um, I don't have a driver for this, so what I do is I take the old bearing and I'll put that in there. And then I will drive on the old bearing. That way I'm not kind of pounding on the edge, I'm using the old bearing. And uh, then when it's in, I obviously take it out and put the new one in. So, you want to look in there and make sure your race is seated up against the little stop or shoulder. Make sure it's all the way in there. And uh, otherwise, when you start torquing down the, when you start torquing it down, it's just going to loosen up once it starts kind of working. So you got to make sure that those are seated fully. All right, just some pot numbers here in case you're interested. That is. Baron, I believe, uh, inside. This is the race or cup. That is the outside baron. And that is the outside race. So, in case you're interested. Over here, that's our seal. This KF. There's a seal here. It's a two-part seal. Seals on the inside, or seals on the outside, and seals on the inside. And then this ring here actually spins in the seal. Um, here is the outside wheel seal. Um, so that guy right there. It's got some corrosion and stuff on there and I didn't really want to stick that one back on because I don't know if it's going to leak. It's, I guess I think there's aluminum in there under the rubber and it's kind of bubbling out pretty good. So I'm going to lubricate these bearings, put them in there, seal in, or at least I'm going to put the rear one in, put the seal in. And I'm going to put the hub back on and uh, then we'll put the outside bearing in and we will preload and then set the torque and I guess the preload on the bearings um, 
these three different ways of doing it. This is a spicer axle. I will put in the description a link to the um, the spicer steer axle, commercial steer axle manual, and it will give you the specific um, information for repairing these axles. Uh, I will put in the video the three different or four different um, torque procedures for the different style nuts and items there and uh, you can look at that um, so make sure you're doing the correct procedure for the correct axle and uh, yeah so let's uh, get this going when this all goes on all the way because it's a little bit it's a little different than this one nah, it's all the same the thing I don't like is the, the ceiling end is it's a little longer or thicker so it's probably going to stick out I think total it should be about the same depth but this rubber section is I can say bigger than the when it came out. We're in. So, put a little lubricant on the inside of the seal because this rubber we got to push on onto that and sometimes it can be a little tough you can get it up close and then kind of use the nut to, to, to push it on just want to look in here make sure it's all the way down it looks like it is Put it on.
pretty easy. Hopefully that was the right seal. So we'll pump some of this in. So much in later. So, take our outside bearing. get them on straight they tend to stick that stick our big washer on big nut this is two and five eighths So this specific um, nut set up here, uh, you have to install the castle nut, seat the bearings by tightening the nut to 200 foot-pounds while rotating the hub. Back off the adjusting nut half a turn, retighten the nut to 50 foot-pounds, and back off the nut one-eighth of a turn. Install a cotter pin. If cotter pin hole is not lined up, loosen nut to first locking position. Check end play for one to five thousandths. Uh, I think it'll bend the cotter pin legs to secure. So, yeah, so we're going to do so 200 half turn, 50 one eighth off.
half a turn. I'm gonna go 50. So, back it off one eight. So, 90 degrees is gonna be a quarter. So 45 degrees, I think is an eight, right? So, let's go here. That's about 45, right? Give me a product pan. So let's uh we'll show you kind of what how this got torqued. I mean basically it's you get it tight and then you just kind of back it off for the next one. So when we tightened it up, we were probably right there so I'll go right in the middle so then just back it off to the next one and that's kind of there drop a cotter pin in got a little bit of wiggle not a lot um, when I took this apart I don't remember if it was on film but I was able to actually turn this nut to the next notch i mean it, it, it wouldn't have gone two notches without actually like cranking the, cranking it down i don't even think it would have gone to it probably would have been just like this like right in the middle but when i took it off it was so loose that i actually was able to tighten it by hand to the next keyway and then it went a little bit past so it's basically the same preload so it looks like somebody backed it off like a quarter turn either that or the bearings have worn to that point which is kind of what i'm thinking is just the bearings have worn and uh, that's why I replaced the bearings. Um, so, yeah. So I think we're good. So we're gonna bend up a car pin here. put our seal on. I already cleaned up the surface so I'll wipe it down a little bit. Put some brake clean on it. Clean up the seal surface. I'll we'll put our outside seal on. Yeah we should be good. Here's our outside seal with our gasket. Three bolts. And, uh, I cleaned up the other bolts. I didn't know this kit was going to come with new bolts. It's pretty nice.
12 to 16 foot pounds. In case you're wondering. line there I'm sure you're aware of it there's a minimum oil level so you want it at least up to that line Might take a little bit to fill it because it's going to end up traveling through the bearing into the, the center section there and then up to the rear one. So it's going to be a take a little bit. Sometimes if you spin it, it kind of works it in there. Well, I mean, it'll run it around the bearings, but times it help get in there a little bit better. So I'm just going to sit here and just keep topping it off until it stops going down. And then I'll know it's full. I, mean, I wouldn't fill it all the way up, but you know, go above the minimum. I mean, you should be good. So I'm gonna do that. Once I'm all set with this, I'll come back and put the drum on and the hub on, or the drum on and then the, the wheel. Torque all. Put the lug nuts down and it should be all set. So, I mean, that's about the gist of it. Anything else, if you want to keep watching, I'll just say slip the drum on and uh, make sure it ain't leaking back here. And that's kind of another thing I want to keep the stuff off until it's all full so I can make sure I don't have uh, the seal leaking down the back. I don't think I'll have a problem with it, but you never know. So. I'd rather find out now than later. You can use, I think they prefer synthetic with this. I think it's like 75, 90 synthetic, or you can use 80, 90 mineral oil or regular. It's up to you. I'm just using the regular because we've got a uh, uh, 10 gallon drum of it so we don't see like really highway driving and things like that so it's not like it's I mean these aren't over the road trucks or anything they're just kind of around town and stuff like that So I was checking, I don't have any leaks in a where. Um, cleaned all this off and I'm just going to be leaking anywhere over here either. So now when you fill, when you fill this, you want to be aware on whether your axle is tipped one way or the other, because obviously fluid is self-leveling if you're tipped back then it's going to fill up the back more than the front so when you come level it's going to be over full so i would suggest keeping it like at the the minimum line until you can get it on or the wheel is down and on level ground that you know is level um probably be up a little bit i guess it doesn't 
might not matter all that much, but something to think about when uh when you're doing this. Just to say be aware of how much fluid you're putting in. Especially when it's up on a jack. I still gotta get some new tires for this, but it'll be a different day. So, let's say you're gonna put your wheel back on. You're all where it's supposed to be. And then you're going to torque all the lug nuts to between 450 and 500 foot pounds on this style wheel. It says so on the lug nuts. And then you should be good. I would suggest retorquing them after a little bit. Make sure they don't loosen up. And uh, yeah, so that's about the end of that. I hope that can help somebody. And uh, thank you for watching.